I never thought my school spring break would end up like this. My girlfriend, who I had always known to be a bit intense, had become even more possessive and obsessive since we arrived at our rented cabin in the woods. At first, it was kind of cute. She would cuddle with me all night and always make sure I was comfortable. But as the days went by, her behavior became more and more alarming. She would constantly ask me about my past relationships, demanding to know if I had ever loved anyone else. She would even check my phone and social media accounts, looking for any signs of infidelity. I tried to brush it off as just her quirky personality, but things escalated quickly. One night, while we were sitting by the fire, she suddenly snapped and accused me of flirting with another girl in our group. I tried to explain that it was just innocent conversation, but she wouldn't listen. She grabbed a nearby log and swung it at me, narrowly missing my head. I knew then that I was in danger. I tried to leave, but she wouldn't let me. She locked the doors and windows and hid the keys. I was trapped with her in the middle of nowhere, with no way to call for help. As the days went by, she became more and more unhinged. She would alternate between crying and screaming at me, accusing me of not truly loving her. I knew then that I had to find a way to escape before things got even worse. But how could I leave someone I loved, even if they were slowly driving me insane? Every time I tried to escape, my Yandera girlfriend would become more and more aggressive. She would threaten me with knives or other sharp objects, telling me that she would rather see me dead than with anyone else. I realized then that I was dealing with someone who was not only unstable but also dangerous. Days turned into weeks, and I lost track of time. My girlfriend's behavior became increasingly erratic, and I found myself constantly on edge, waiting for the next outburst. She would often break down in tears, telling me that she loved me more than anything in the world, but that she couldn't bear the thought of losing me to anyone else. I knew then that I had to come up with a plan to escape. I began to carefully observe her behavior, looking for any weaknesses or opportunities to strike. Finally, I saw my chance. One day, while she was distracted, I managed to grab the keys to the cabin and make a run for it. I ran as fast as I could through the dense forest, never looking back. I could hear her screaming my name, promising to find me and bring me back to her. I knew then that I had to keep running, no matter what. Hours turned into days, and I finally made it back to civilization. I was exhausted and traumatized, but at least I was alive. I went to the police and told them everything that had happened, and they were able to track down my Yandera girlfriend and arrest her. It took me months to recover from the trauma, but eventually, I was able to move on with my life. I knew then that I would never be able to forget what had happened, but I would also never make the mistake of falling for someone like her again. As I ran through the dense forest, my heart pounded in my chest. Every sound seemed amplified, and every shadow seemed to hide some unseen terror. I could hear my Yandera girlfriend's screams echoing behind me, promising to find me and make me pay for betraying her. The darkness seemed to close in around me, and I stumbled over roots and rocks, barely able to stay on my feet. Every time I glanced behind me, I saw her silhouette stalking closer and closer. I knew then that I had to keep running, no matter what. The woods were alive with the sounds of the night. Owls hooted in the distance, and branches creaked overhead. But there were other sounds too, sounds that made my blood run cold. I could hear footsteps behind me, heavy breathing, and the low growl of something that was not quite human. I knew then that I was being hunted. My Yandera girlfriend had always been a bit unstable, but I had never imagined that she could be capable of something like this. As I ran, I could feel her presence growing stronger, as if she was somehow feeding on my fear. I finally burst through the trees and onto a dirt road, panting and gasping for breath. But there was no one around, no sign of help. I was completely alone, with no idea where to go next. And then I saw her. My Yandera girlfriend was standing at the edge of the forest, her eyes gleaming in the moonlight. She was holding something in her hand, something long and sharp. I turned to run, but it was too late. She was upon me in an instant, her blade slicing through the air. I could feel the hot rush of blood as it spilled from my body, and the darkness closed in around me. When I woke up, I was in a hospital bed, surrounded by doctors and nurses. 
They told me that I had been found unconscious by the side of the road, with multiple stab wounds. They said that I was lucky to be alive. But I knew then that luck had nothing to do with it. My Yandera girlfriend was still out there, somewhere, waiting for her next chance to strike. And I knew that I would never be truly safe again. As I lay in the hospital bed, my mind raced with the horrifying memories of my Yandera girlfriend's attack. The doctor said I was lucky to be alive, but I knew that luck had nothing to do with it. My girlfriend was still out there, waiting for her chance to finish what she had started. The weeks that followed were a nightmare. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw her face, twisted with rage and madness. I could hear her voice in my head, promising to come back and finish me off. I tried to tell the police what had happened, but they didn't seem to believe me. They said that there was no evidence of my girlfriend's involvement, that it was just a random attack. But I knew the truth. I knew that she was out there, waiting to strike again. And then one night, I heard a knock on my door. My heart raced as I cautiously approached, peering through the peephole. And there she was, my Yandera girlfriend, standing on the other side of the door. I tried to run, but she was too fast. She chased me through the darkened streets, her footsteps pounding behind me. I could hear her breathing, hot and heavy on my neck. I knew then that this was it, that I was never going to make it out alive. But just when I thought all hope was lost, something strange happened. A figure appeared in the darkness, tall and imposing. He wore a long coat and a wide-brimmed hat, and he carried a strange, curved blade. In an instant, he was upon my Yandera girlfriend, slicing through the air with his blade. She screamed and thrashed, but he seemed to be too powerful for her. And then, just as suddenly as he had appeared, he was gone. I never saw that strange figure again, but I knew that he had saved my life. My Yandera girlfriend was gone, disappeared into the night. And while I knew that she was still out there somewhere, waiting for her chance to strike, I also knew that I was not alone. There was something out there, something powerful and otherworldly, that was watching over me. And as long as it was there, I knew that I had a chance to survive. After the encounter with the mysterious figure, my life began to spiral out of control. I became obsessed with finding out who he was and what had happened to my Yandera girlfriend. I spent every waking moment poring over police reports and news articles, trying to piece together the events of that fateful night. But the more I dug, the more I realized that something was not right. There were inconsistencies in the reports, details that didn't add up. And then I discovered something truly chilling, a string of murders that had taken place in the area, all with the same strange, curved blade that the mysterious figure had wielded. I knew then that I had stumbled onto something much bigger than just my Yandera girlfriend's attack. There was a killer out there, someone who had been operating in the shadows for years. And somehow, that killer was connected to the figure who had saved my life. I began to fear for my safety once again. Every time I left my house, I felt like I was being watched. Every time I heard a strange noise in the night, I was convinced that the killer was coming for me. And then, one night, I woke up to find a note lying on my pillow. It was written in a language I didn't recognize, and it was signed with a strange symbol that sent chills down my spine. I knew then that I was in grave danger. But I also knew that I couldn't give up. I had to find out the truth, no matter what the cost. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. I traveled to different cities, talking to people who had known the mysterious figure. I pieced together fragments of information, slowly building a picture of what had happened that night. And finally, after months of searching, I found myself standing in front of a decrepit old house on the outskirts of town. It was the same house where the mysterious figure had lived, and where he had apparently vanished without a trace. I took a deep breath and stepped inside. The air was thick with dust and the scent of decay. As I made my way through the darkened rooms, I felt like I was being watched. And then, in the shadows, I saw him. The mysterious figure stepped forward, his face obscured by the wide-brimmed hat. I could feel the weight of his gaze on me, like he was judging me. And then, in a voice that sent shivers down my spine, he spoke. You should not have come here, he said. You have awakened forces that you cannot understand. 
And then he vanished into the darkness, leaving me alone with the chilling realization that I had just made a terrible mistake. I stood frozen in the empty room, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Was the mysterious figure a friend or foe? What forces had I awakened? I felt the weight of an impending doom looming over me. Suddenly, the room started to spin, and I felt myself being pulled into a vortex. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in a strange, twisted dimension. The air was thick with the scent of sulfur, and the sky was a sickly shade of green. I knew then that I had stepped into a realm of the supernatural. I tried to run, but my legs felt heavy, and my movements were sluggish. As I stumbled through the eerie landscape, I noticed that there were creatures lurking in the shadows. They were dark, shapeless things, and they seemed to be hunting me. I tried to run, but they were too fast. I could feel their claws tearing into my flesh, their teeth sinking into my skin. Just when I thought that all hope was lost, a bright light appeared in the distance. It was the only source of hope in this twisted realm, and I knew that I had to reach it if I wanted to survive. With every ounce of strength I had left, I pushed myself forward. The creatures were getting closer, their hissing breaths hot on my neck. I could feel my energy draining, my body starting to shut down. And then, just as I was about to collapse, I reached the light. It was a portal, a way out of this twisted realm. I threw myself through the portal, feeling the heat of the creature's breath on my heels. When I emerged on the other side, I was back in the old house. The mysterious figure was standing in front of me, his eyes locked on mine. You should not have come here, he repeated. I tried to speak, but my voice was hoarse. I stumbled backwards, feeling like I was going to collapse again. And then, just as suddenly as I had arrived, I was back in my own world. I was lying on the ground, my body battered and bruised. But I was alive. As I looked around, trying to make sense of what had just happened, I realized that the mysterious figure was gone. He had vanished, leaving me with more questions than answers. But one thing was certain. I had stumbled onto something much bigger than just my Yandera girlfriend's attack. There were forces at work that were beyond my understanding, and I knew that I had to be careful. Because if I wasn't, I might not be so lucky next time. Days had passed since my harrowing experience in the old house, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me. I constantly looked over my shoulder, expecting to see the mysterious figure or one of those twisted creatures from the other dimension. My Yandera girlfriend noticed my unease and tried to comfort me. But her attempts only made me more anxious. I couldn't trust anyone, not even her. I started to keep my distance, wary of her every move. But despite my suspicions, I couldn't help but feel drawn to her. She was beautiful and passionate, and she had always been there for me, even when things got tough. As the days passed, I started to let my guard down, to trust her once again. But that was when the nightmares started. I would dream of the twisted creatures from the other dimension, their eyes glowing in the darkness, their claws reaching for me. And in every dream, my Yandera girlfriend was there, watching me with cold, unfeeling eyes. I started to wonder if she was involved in the otherworldly happenings that had brought me so much fear and pain. Was she somehow connected to the mysterious figure and his dark magic? Was she using me for her own twisted purposes? I knew that I had to find out the truth. So, one night, when my Yandera girlfriend was sleeping, I snuck into her room and started to search for clues. What I found was more horrifying than anything I could have imagined. Her room was filled with strange symbols and talismans, all pointing towards some unknown purpose. There were books on the occult and ancient rituals, all written in languages that I couldn't understand. And then, as I was about to leave, I saw it. A mirror, hidden behind a curtain. I couldn't resist the urge to look into it, to see if it held any clues. But what I saw was beyond comprehension. The mirror showed me a glimpse of the other dimension, the twisted landscape and the creatures that inhabited it. And in the center of it all was my Yandera girlfriend, smiling coldly at me. I stumbled backwards, my heart racing. I knew then that she was not what she seemed. She was a creature of darkness, a being from the other dimension, using me for her own twisted ends. I had to get out, 
to escape her grasp before it was too late. But as I turned to leave, I saw her standing in the doorway, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. You shouldn't have seen that, she said, her voice cold and devoid of emotion. I knew then that I was trapped, that there was no way out. And as she stepped closer, I realized that I was facing a fate far worse than death. She slowly walked towards me, her eyes fixed on mine. I could feel the darkness radiating from her, a sickening energy that made my skin crawl. You were never meant to see that, my love, she said, her voice dripping with malice. But now that you have, there's no going back. I tried to run, but my legs wouldn't move. It was like I was rooted to the spot, paralyzed by her dark magic. I could feel her getting closer and closer, her cold breath on my neck. And then, suddenly, everything went black. I felt myself falling, tumbling down into an endless abyss. I could hear her laughter echoing around me, taunting me as I fell. When I woke up, I was back in the old house, lying on the dusty floor. I looked around, confused, and saw the mysterious figure standing over me. You shouldn't have trusted her, he said, his voice echoing through the empty room. She was never human, never capable of love. You were just a pawn in her game. I tried to protest, to deny what he was saying, but deep down I knew it was true. My Yandera girlfriend had been using me all along, manipulating me for her own twisted ends. I looked up at the mysterious figure, hoping for some kind of salvation, but all I saw was cold indifference in his eyes. You need to leave this place, he said, turning to leave. Before it's too late. And with that, he was gone, leaving me alone in the dark, abandoned house. I stumbled to my feet, my mind reeling with fear and confusion. As I made my way outside, I saw the moon shining down on me, casting an eerie glow over everything. And in that moment, I realized that I was still being watched, still being hunted by the dark forces that lurked in the shadows. I knew then that I would never be free, that I would always be haunted by the memory of my Yandera girlfriend and the horrors she had unleashed upon me. But even in the face of that knowledge, I refused to give up. I would fight, with every ounce of my being, to survive in this twisted, terrifying world. As I stumbled through the dark forest, my mind consumed with fear and paranoia, I suddenly heard a strange noise in the distance. It sounded like someone screaming, but it was so faint that I couldn't tell for sure. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to do. But then I heard it again, louder this time, and I knew that I had to investigate. I followed the sound, my heart pounding in my chest, until I finally stumbled upon a clearing. And there, in the center of the clearing, was the source of the noise. It was my Yandera girlfriend, or at least it looked like her. But her face was twisted and distorted, her eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. She was surrounded by a group of hooded figures, chanting in some strange, ancient language. And as I watched, horrified, she began to transform before my very eyes. Her body twisted and contorted, growing larger and more monstrous by the second. Her skin turned a sickly shade of green, her eyes becoming slitted like a snake's. And then, suddenly, she lunged at me, her jaws snapping shut around my throat. I could feel her teeth tearing into my flesh, ripping out chunks of my neck. I knew I was going to die, but even in that moment, I refused to give up. With a sudden burst of strength, I reached out and grabbed one of the hooded figures, pulling down their hood to reveal their face. And to my shock, it was the mysterious figure who had warned me about my girlfriend in the first place. With my dying breath, I looked up at him and whispered, Why? Why did you do this to me? And he just smiled, his eyes glinting with a mad, unholy light. Because I needed a sacrifice, he said, before disappearing into the shadows. And with that, everything went dark. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more great content. Your support helps us continue to create and share valuable information with you. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.